Welcome back. Our boat Catalpa is currently in the boatyard in Mexico, but in our last episode, we have driven to Phoenix to pick up some boat bits and supplies. Just wanted to let you know before you got into the video and got confused. So here's what's Family coming challenge up. of an ice bath. Who do you think's gonna last the longest in the ice bath? Good. We are back. They'll be right, mate. They'll be right. Never to get this out. Seriously, that was the plan. We are an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. I think she's settling in now. She's sort of got used to it. Five seconds, she's going to hit the four minute mark and she is about... Whoever guessed mum would win. Well, you would be correct. She made it to five minutes and yes, she lasted the longest. Honestly, I can't move my hands. They're frozen. <laughs> Bella did nearly two minutes and I lasted in there for around three minutes and a half. And Dad, well, he had a go. <laughs> oh, it's painful. Is that too cold? Oh, that's nailing my legs, like hurting. Nah, it's not for me. <laughs> I'm just gonna stick to my mud water. I like warmth. All right, guys, we're gonna warm Sarah back up, and there's one way to do that. Amazing day way to start your day today. We started with an ice bath, and now we are having a mud water. Gonna sip as well. <laughs> I just need it on my hands. Sarah's just done five minutes in the ice bath and struggling to get her body temperature back. We did our ice bath this morning. I am absolutely freezing. I'm struggling to warm up, but fellas just made me a mud water and it's so delicious and it's defrosting my fingers because I they, they literally were frozen. I couldn't move them for a long time. Thanks to mud water, I am warming up and it's delicious and we'll be able to get into the rest of the day. I'm just gonna keep warming up a little bit more. In saying that, it's so hot outside. All I'd have to do is walk outside and I would be so warm. But this is a good start. Drinking my mud water. So Lee and I just went to pick up our first lot of packages. Well, our second lot of packages. We got one lot of packages yesterday. There are so many. And we didn't bring the kids because we knew that they wouldn't fit. It's gonna go down a lot after we debox it, but have a look! <laughs> And the boot is full too. I don't know how we're gonna do this, but anyway. We're supposed to pick up a freezer. That's what's happening. I still can't feel my fingertips from my ice bath this morning. I hope I don't have a problem forever because it's a really horrible feeling. <laughs> but it's like an hour. How long since I've been out? And they are like completely numb. Anyway. A little frostbite. A little Aww. frostbite. Can you get frostbite from having an ice bath? Possibly. That's what we're doing. We're gonna find a bin now so we can debox. Hopefully find a bin. And then we'll see how much room we have left. Kids are in the hotel because we can't fit them in at the moment because there's a lot of boxes back there. We've deboxed 80% of it. We've just gotta do one more deboxing. Good news is our freezer fits in the car. That was what our worry was. And I think we're all gonna be able to fit in the car because Taj and I were gonna catch the bus back if all the stuff didn't fit. But, we don't know yet, but we're pretty sure the kids will fit in here, so we won't have to catch, we won't have to catch the bus back, that's good news. We pretty much nailed everything, we're just going to do a food shop once we get rid of all these boxes, because we're going to plug the freezer in and fill it. <laughs> Some fridge stuff. In with dinner. One of the four. Alright, we are. Oh, kids have got some new clothes. Thanks, Wens. We got a care package from Australia. Thank you, Wendy. We love it. The whole boot is full. We have a freezer. <laughs> we don't know where we're going to put the kids. They'll fit somewhere. <laughs> I think that's it. We're done. Heading back. We have come to Phoenix for two days. Got all the packages, did shopping. Now we're heading back to the boatyard. And Taj and I have to squish right next to each other because we've got the bags and the fridge. Yeah. 
It's road trip time. Again, we're just going back to Mexico now. Good. We are Luck. back. We're back to the boat. Sheer fucking luck. Look we made it. And nice driving, honey. Got a lot of gear to unload. <laughs> Package. All right, we're going to set up our air cons and stuff. We're about the temperature right now. I'm kind yeah, of glad we came good. back in the afternoon yeah. to set it all up. Look over there. So we last night we got back moving all our stuff back on and sorting because we just spent the last four weeks in an Airbnb which is really nice so we took all our clothes off we took a lot of things there because they had washing machines and dryers so we did a lot of washing so we had to bring it all back and we are now today just sorting everything out and trying to find homes for a lot of things working on the boat and living on the boat as we know is is not easy it's quite challenging and we're just trying to work ourselves out so that we do it comfortably and we have some air conditioning we bought two air conditioners from Home Depot in Arizona and we've got one in our room one in Bella's room it's cooled the boat down not significantly but it's cooled it down a lot today it's overcast and storming and uh, I think that's a bit of a blessing while we cool the boat down because if it's the sun's out it gets super hot so we'll see how they go when it is actually sunny but last night we slept fine there's stuff everywhere but our freezer is finally in its home where it's going to live this is where our freezer is going to live we got rid of the chair that's under there and that's its home now we've just got to sort out how we're going to have tools out and utilize the space <laughs> we don't we don't love living on the boat and working on it but we're used to it so we'll make it work we are um, take it to the bin part. unpacking things okay. and we have a few thank yous to say I got a Bella and I got a box from Wendy thanks Wens we love it and it was so thoughtful and there was like face oils in there for us girls and some bikinis and like other things and we're just so grateful so thank you thank you thank you Wendy thank you um, we also have another care package from David. Lee is super stoked. This is so sweet. This is such a, a nice box that we received. And it had a lot of personal items. Oh, uh, there's Lee's some lures in that. here. We've got lures, hooks, little reel, gloves. Um, the, obviously the holder, we haven't got one of those and everyone struggles with the fish at the moment. So that's gonna go to really good use. Awesome, thanks mate, really appreciate it. Yeah, it was super thoughtful and um, Taj is gonna love this. <laughs> if you watch her, that last video where he's catching a fish, he, had a t he puts a towel down there <laughs> to try and make it easier, but this will be so much better for everyone, especially for the girls too. So thanks David, you are an absolute legend. Also, Gerald and Ron and a few other people bought us stuff from our Amazon wish list. So thank you, thank you, thank you again to all those people. We are incredibly grateful for everything that everybody um, has done for us. And now we are going to sort the boat. We gotta clean up, <laughs> stressing me out. It's a mess. Put things away. We can't put those, th those are our sails back there, but we will find a space for most things, yes? Bell? Yeah. The goal today is to make the boat livable and workable at the same time. Like you have to patch holes, like this is just real little pimples that we're just fixing. It was under the gel coat that wasn't even protruding through the gel coat, so. Let's go see, Taj is grinding them out. Let's go see what Taj is up to. Bella's job today was to sand off the thin blue strips. Most afternoons we go to the beach. It's pretty close so we can walk or ride, but it's always a nice way to end the day and sometimes the beach is packed, but most days it's not that crowded. So Dad and I have successfully taken off all of the blue sticker stripes that were on the side of the boat. And we have now gurneyed the boat the side and like the bottom and we are doing like a wet rub and then we still have to polish and I think buff it and um yeah that's what we're doing right now so the stickers are gone so now we are buffing see these <laughs> we're trying to 
to get rid of them and buff the boat also. After the painted on stripes were sanded off with the orbital sander, Bella lightly wet sanded the top side and then Dad followed with the buffer. So Bella and Lee have been taking off the ugly blue stripes that were on the other side of the boat and now they've polished the entire boat and sealed it all up. So that's pretty amazing. She's looking pretty good and Lee is going to be stoked because he's just, this is like the first job that he's going to be finished completely um, polishing the side of the boat. And no, we're not just polishing the boat so that it looks good and shiny, we're sealing the boat. So the whole point of polishing is so that it's the fiberglass or the gel coat's no longer porous. It looks so nice. I didn't want to polish, but <laughs> we did remove and use sandpaper to get rid of the old blue stripes. So I didn't want the raw fiberglass with no coating on it. It's just going to stain in the boat yard. It's so dirty in here, just more of a sealing the boat up. So that's about it. Busy, busy. Nelly there. One of the major jobs that was on the list for this haul out was replacing the cutlass bearing. We picked up the new one on our last run to Phoenix, so today we're removing the old one. First things first, Dad will remove the propeller. A letter and a number that we align here to make sure we've got 18 degrees, but apparently that's what it is. And uh, well, I'm going to pull it apart carefully and I'll double check and see what setting it is. But just in case things don't go to plan, you align this so it's pretty much like that, like it's feathered for streamline. And then I'm going to pull out the old trusty punch. And like I always do, I put a mark on here so I know how it's going to be realigned when I put it back together. Always put a reference point on it, that way you can't go wrong in putting it back together later. Uh, so you can see our anode here. Um, we obviously had some really bad electrolysis in the marina in San Diego. So we've let this go pretty far. So if you're in a marina, I do that. <laughs> you could probably, some marinas you may get around three months, six months. And then out in the blue, you might get up to two years. You definitely, if you are in a marina, you've got to check your environment. Your near steel boats and whatnot can be amplified. And uh, make sure you've got your anodes right and your grounding's all up to scratch, which in our case it wasn't. So this boat obviously sat for years in the marina. Uh, when we got to the boat, there was no anode on the shaft left. So in tail, it's... Uh... And that was, we put that on... Maybe a year ago. Start thinking about removing it. Got to go inside now and um, unbolt the flange, pull the coupling off, and then uh, slide the shaft off. Dad removed the dripless shaft seal so we could pull out the shaft. Now I should be able to pull the shaft out now. That should go through and I should be able to pull it all out. Woo! Now for the fun part, getting out the cutlass bearing. Alright. I think you should replace that anyway, Gabby. I'd like to, but it's not in the budget at the moment, darling. <laughs> you have to like grind the whole boat out? It's like a six to seven week wait and about $2,000. And about next time. And about a lot of work too. <laughs> She'll be right, mate. She'll be right. Never to get this out. Now, you could generally have a puller and we could put it on, you wind it out, but we don't have that. So what I did get from Harbour Freight the other day 
I was going to borrow one off someone down here, but they're on special for 29 bucks, guys. I got myself a little uh, reciprocal saw. So we're going to put a blade on that and see if I can cut this out. Seriously, that was the plan. You don't have one? Just make it up as you go, you know. <laughs> put a cut in it. <laughs> Do you want to grab me the pipe for And as we suspected, it was not an easy job. Yeah, unless it's just in the middle there, I haven't cut through. I, don't, I think I have. It's just your tort, you're so far away. Yeah. This job sucks. You knew it was going to be a pick of a job, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> Gentle, that <laughs> thing. <laughs> That'd be a real quick of a job. We are going to need a bigger tool. Oh, man, has helped him out and got him the biggest wrench you've ever seen. <laughs> Here we go. But even that whopper of a wrench wasn't working. Oh, when it spins, is that spinning? Is that spinning? No, I don't think it did. That's why I'm wondering. Uh, it must be two pieces. Oh, you thought that anyway. Remember? Yeah. No, it's not. There's a, there's a join there. After giving it a good go, Dad finally came up with a solution. See you again, summer, baby! Oh, go, go, go! hallelujah! Time. You just haven't even tapped it out without cutting it. <laughs> oh, yay! Got it! Thank you, old mate. It's big tool. There you have it. That's how you remove a cutlass bearing. What a pain in the ass job. You can see our old cutlass bearings. There's no ribs left in them at all. And you can see what a cutlass bearing should look like. All the ribs in there, shiny, shiny, no ribs. Anyway, we didn't have the luxury today of a puller, so we used the reciprocal saw. We had to put a couple of slices in there and get medieval with it. But anyway, we got it out. There is actually two pieces. Um, we're only gonna put a one piece in, guys. Did you work out what you're doing? Yep. Nice. All right, we're just gently tapping this in. I was going to make up a puller and put a threaded rod through and pull it, but it's actually, it's not too bad. That's the old dripless uh, TSS I'm using here. Nice flat surface. No, it probably could be tighter. It's just old. Like, usually we'd probably set up a puller or a threaded rod and wind it in but there's four um, grub screws around the side so that's fine it's not going to spin sure for our size shaft the specific this the specified bearing length was what i ordered and i was wondering how these guys had a different length to what i could order and they'd obviously put uh two halves in to make a hole but uh, I was talking to the guys at the bearing factory and I called them up, told them what I had and they said, look, it's sufficient to have the length of bearing that I've purchased, otherwise it was going to have to be a custom bearing and there's absolutely no need for it. But the only problem is that it falls short a little bit 
I haven't put it all the way in yet, but it falls short a little. It's got to sit proud one end and slightly in on the other. So the only problem is a bit of growth that's going to get around the end. But I'll let Sarah take care of that when she puts on the tank and gets down there and cleans the shaft. And uh, yeah, let's finish this off. Great. This is super pink all the way through. Yeah, she's no good. She's so good. <laughs> So I'm going to recess this a little bit more than what it is. Um, you can see the colour. This has had such bad electrolysis on it that there's the, there's the colour it should be and there's the pink colour coming through. I've been hammering this all day with a hammer and I thought well if it breaks I'll put a new one on. Um, but we may even put an anode on this but like I said earlier we've got to check that this is tied into the bonding system and that it's um, grounded properly. Lots of work to do, lots of little holes to get in and it's that, that first year of buying a boat you've just got to try and get through all the little gremlins that just keep jumping out at you and I feel like there's a hundred of them at the moment. Put, we put this on everything because who knows when you've got to pull this off again. Oh. <laughs> Professional. Professional. <laughs> Mix a little bit of dust in there. If only everyone done that. If only all the previous boat owners did that. <laughs> Those ones came out okay, right? Thanks so much for watching. Join us next time as Dad services the propeller and we continue to get Catalpa ready for crossing oceans.